What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Cly, and it's time for a little DIY. And while today's die set might end up looking a little bit plain when compared to some of the others I've made and will be making, once the idea came to me, I just had to do it. And interestingly, this set was actually inspired by the paint that I'm going to use to ink it, which is pretty much the opposite of how I usually do it. I typically come up with what's going to go inside of the die first, and then have to scramble to find a paint to match. And the paint in question is this. I found this chalky finished turquoise paint at Michael's, and I fell in love the moment I saw it. And I also knew what I had to do with it immediately, because I've always been a huge fan of the color turquoise when combined with terracotta. And believe it or not, finding a terracotta pigment for these dice that I actually like ended up being the hardest part of this project. In fact, I had to get a little bit unconventional and weird with it, and let me show you how. The most important things I'm going to be using in this project are my resin, a mixing cup, a stir stick, a syringe, a pipette, a set of dice molds, once again my cap molds, which I'm just about done with the video on how to make those, and some terracotta acrylic paint. That's right, I'm going to be using acrylic paint of all things to color my resin. Mainly because dry terracotta pigment is not cheap. Just a tiny little jar was going to set me back $5 or more, and there was no guarantee I was going to like the final result. On the flip side, this 2 ounce bottle of terracotta acrylic paint retails for 79 cents, and because that was the only thing I was buying at the time, I was a cheapskate and used an additional 40% off coupon, so the price before tax ended up being something like 50 cents. That's a price I feel comfortable throwing away if I don't like the end result. Fortunately, I've done quite a few experiments in the past on using acrylic paint to color resin, hence my large volume of experimeeples. So I know how this resin in particular is going to react. That being said, not every resin is going to react the same way, so it would definitely be a good idea to have a few small molds on hand to do some test casting. Now, unlike last time, I'm going to be using a pigment to color these dice, and so I need to mix up an entire batch of resin at once. The last couple of sets were made by embedding objects in clear dice, so I didn't have to worry as much about die lots. And because I need to mix up an entire batch, I'm going to be using 40 milliliters of resin. Now I'm going to assume at least a few of you don't want to watch me mixing up resin in silence for two minutes, so I'll be right back. Now that I've got my resin all mixed up, it's time to add the acrylic paint. Now you're going to see me adding 10 drops of paint to this resin before mixing everything together, but I ultimately ended up using 20 drops of paint. With this resin, I found the butter zone of acrylic paint to resin to be around 1 to 2 drops for every 2 milliliters of resin. I can add a little bit more, but I found the upper threshold to be about 2 drops of paint for every 1 milliliter of resin, and at that point, the resin's going to start discoloring and becoming thick and sort of mucusy. It still sets, but it's disgusting. To get the resin into the molds, what I'm going to be using is a syringe as well as a pipette. However, I'm not going to be using the pipette in a traditional way due to the fact that Amazing Clearcast is on the thicker side when it comes to casting resins. Instead, I'm going to cut the end off of the pipette, fit it into the lure lock on the syringe, and then apply a hot glue seal. Yes, I know there are wide channel blunt needles on the market for this style of syringe, but ultimately this is a little bit cheaper, and I also have a huge bag of pipettes lying around, which I bought to use with resin, but then found out the stuff I was using was a little bit too viscous. So I've got to do something with them. Filling these little molds is very simple. All I need to do is suck a little bit of the resin into the syringe, poke the end of my makeshift needle into the fill hole, and then start injecting. It is a good idea to pull the needle out of the mold every now and then in order to allow the trapped air to escape. If you pull out the needle and notice resin being forced through the fill hole and into the reservoir, you know you have the mold pretty much topped off. I do like to give it a couple extra pumps just to make sure though. Now to put this into the pressure pot for at least 24 hours, but I'm not going to be taking them out of the mold until at least 48 hours have passed. 
And this is the big downside to using acrylic paint or pretty much any other kind of water-based pigment in your resin. Because while the resin will solidify and no longer be tacky after the initial curing period, it will stay very flexible for at least another 12 to 24 hours, as you can see with this meeple. And here's the same meeple 24 hours later. And there you go. Now you weren't imagining things, I did use 1000 grit twice during the sanding process for these dice, and that is because it produces such a nice matte finish. Now if you're wondering why I sanded these after I painted the numbers, that's because the matte finish does not like letting go of paint, hence you need to sand them for a couple of seconds in order to clean things up. Also, as you can tell by the sheer number of meeples, 40 milliliters ended up being just a little bit too much. I had enough resin left over to make three and a half meeples, two of which are a little pockmarked due to the fact that I used them for sanding tests as well, so that I can make sure I got everything to the finish I wanted. They didn't end up in the pressure pot, so they were full of air bubbles, and this is what you get. And for those of you wondering why I'm showing four meeples when I said I got three and a half, that's because this one is actually a little bit of a hybrid. The other half is the pumpkin spice mix that I used in the dice set that I made back in November 2019. As for what I think about these dice and how they turned out, well, first off, I love them. These ended up having a great matte earthenware look. However, that doesn't mean that I'm 100% satisfied with the result. While I do love the dark terracotta look, it's a wee bit darker than what I had originally planned. I definitely wanted something closer to this look, but this does get a pass. I think I might end up remaking these off camera, and while mixing in the terracotta paint, I'll throw in a couple of drops of white paint as well in order to bring the brightness level to where I want it. One thing I will say though is that this is not the last time you're going to see me using acrylic paint to color my resin. After doing this a few times, I have fallen in love with it. It is my new favorite way to get opaque colors into dice. The colors suspend so much better than any of the dry pigments that I've tried so far, and acrylic paint is so much cheaper than liquid resin pigments. Yes, there is the limitation to how much you can add, as well as the fact that while the dice are no longer tacky after 24 hours, you do need to give them additional time to reach full hardness. And the fact that acrylic paint has a wider color palette when compared to resin pigment is a nice bonus. And that pretty much covers it. All I've got left to do is store my dice. Though, come to think of it, while this is indeed my new favorite way to store dice, I think this might be a little bit more fitting for this project. Ooh, I really like that sound. This is probably going to end up being my new rolling gup. Let's just take a listen, shall we? Let's get those out. Ooh, a 19. Not half bad. Oh, and if you're worried about these falling to the ground and breaking, I don't care. These are available from Dollar Tree in a three-pack, so I am more than willing to sacrifice durability for added flair. 
And one last thing I want to mention before I wrap things up is the fact that I recently made a Discord server for this channel. I've been thinking about doing this for a while now, and I decided about 10,000 subscribers seemed to be the right time to do it. Just ignore the fact that I dragged my feet long enough to gain an additional 500 subscribers. Now, of course, the server is a work in progress, and as such, it's pretty bare bones at the moment, but you might still want to join, especially those of you who have notifications turned on because I've gotten quite a few comments from people saying that they've had notifications turned on ever since they subscribed, and they're still not being served by YouTube. However, there is a bot on the Discord server that will ping everybody the moment one of my videos goes live, and of course, it's easy enough to change your notification settings on Discord so that you can opt out of that. I've gone ahead and put the invite link for the server in the description of this video, and we'll be putting it in the descriptions of all videos going forward, Plus, I have it in the social media tab on my channel where you'll find my Twitter account, Instagram, barely updated webpage, etc. And on that note, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.